We're on a new lesson now, lesson 26, about irregular figures. This is area and volume of composite figures, lesson 26a. If you become lost or confused, there's links in the description to help you. When a figure is made from several shapes that are combined, it's a composite figure. And composite means made of several parts or elements. To find the area or volume of shapes that are combined, we find their area or volume separately and add the results together. We're going to need that sheet of formulas that they give you at the beginning of the test. So for this composite figure, we have a square pyramid and a rectangular prism. We find the volume for the square pyramid, we find the volume for the rectangular prism, and we add them together to get the entire thing. We split the figure into simple shapes, so for something like this, we see a half circle, a rectangle, and a triangle. To find the area, we would use the formula for the area of a circle, pi r squared, that would be 3.14, and we don't see the radius, but we see that this is 5 inches across, and remember, that would be the diameter, so the radius is half of that. So half of 5 is a 2.5. So that means we have 3.14 times 2.5 squared. That's going to be approximately 19.625. That's the area of a full circle. We only have a half circle, so we have to remember to divide that by 2. For the parallelogram, the rectangle, we just do base times height, length times width, right? That's going to be 3 times 5. That's 15. For the triangle right here, the base is 3, we take this measure here and use it for the base, and half base height would be half times 3 times 2, because the height is 2. That would be half a 6, or it would be a 3. The 19.625 divided by 2 comes out as a 9.8125 for that half circle. Then we have 15 for the parallelogram, that rectangle, and we have 3 for the triangle. We add them all up together, and the area of this composite figure is approximately 27.8125 inches squared. We say approximately, because remember when using pi, there's so many digits for pi, we just use 3.14 as an approximation. That's going to make all the answers approximations, and we're going to use that approximate symbol with a couple of wavy lines, right? For this one, if you look at this, we really do have a full circle but it's got a rectangle in the middle. The two half circles make a whole circle, so we don't have to divide it by two, like we did here. The area of a circle is pi r squared, and we look here, this is our diameter of four. We need half of that for the radius, so the radius is gonna be two. So for pi r squared, we're gonna do 3.14 times two squared, which is 3.14 times four, which comes out approximately as 12.56. We do the parallelogram, the base times height, or the rectangle, length times width, same thing. We get 2 times 4, which is an 8. And we can see the one little mark here means feet. So we add these two amounts together, and the area is approximately 20.56 square feet. We can also use logic and common sense. This can be split into three parallelograms. One, two, three. We can draw a dotted line here and one here, or a very light line, and get three parallelograms. There's no measurements here, but if we use the vertical measurement one inch, this vertical measurement of 2.5, and this vertical measurement of 1.5, it's as if we brought the walls all in. We total these three vertical measures and get five inches. So for this tall skinny one, we have one times five because this is showing a two-inch base, and that's one inch, and that's not included in this tall, skinny one. So if we took that one away, that means that's one inch, and that's one inch, isn't it? So we have a one times five for this one. That's five. We have a one times two, and a one times 1.5. We add those together and get 8.5 square inches, or 8.5 inches squared. So remember, area has two measures, length times width, or base times height. It's two measures. So the answer is in squared units. It's going to have a little two exponent, or it's going to be squared. Okay? We can split this into a square pyramid and a rectangular prism. We find the volume of the square pyramid. We find the volume of the rectangular prism, and we add them together. So the formula for the volume of a square pyramid is one-third times the base edge squared times height. 
There's no measures here around the base of this square pyramid, but there are measures here, so we could use those. So we have 6 times 6. That's going to give us a 36. And the height is 5. That's right here. See? So remember, the height of a pyramid comes perpendicular from the base and goes straight up. doesn't matter what type of pyramid it is, okay? So now we have 1 3rd times 36 times 5. Well, 1 3rd of 36 is a 12, and 12 times 5 is 60. So now we have the volume of that pyramid. We need to do the rectangular prism. That's length times width times height. So that's going to be 6 times 6 times 8. 6 times 8 is 48, and 6 times 48 is 288 cubic centimeters, because this is in centimeters, see? We add the 60 and the 288, and we get 348 cubic centimeters, or 348 centimeters cubed. This one kind of looks like stairs, doesn't it? We can split this into two rectangular prisms by putting an imaginary line here. The volume is length times width times height, so we do 6 times 5 times 8 for this one. That's 30 times 8, or 240. We do 6 times 5 times 4 for this one, which is 30 times 4, or 120. We add them together and get 360 cubic inches, or 360 inches cubed. So remember, volume has three measures, length times width times height. So the answer is in cubed units with a little 3 exponent. Area is two measures, so it's got the 2 exponent, okay? We can find the volume of this composite figure. If you look at it, it's got a cone on the top and a cone on the bottom with a cylinder in the middle. And we have two cones with the same measures and a cylinder. Look, it's got a 2 centimeter radius and a 5 centimeter height. 2 centimeter radius and a 5 centimeter height. So if we find the volume of this one, we could just double it, save ourselves some time, and then do the volume of the cylinder, okay? So the volume of a cone is one-third pi r squared h. So that means we have one-third times 3.14 for pi times the radius squared, 2 centimeters squared, which is going to give us a 4, times that height of 5. The 4 times 5 is 20. 3.14 times 20 is 62.8, and then that needs to be multiplied by a third. Well, do you notice that I ignored this one-third and I did all this math over here? Because whenever I see a third, I do this math first because when you're dealing with a third, it's easier to divide it by three. When it's an even number like a two, four, six, that's kind of easy, but you could still divide it. If it's half, you could still divide it by two or a fourth divide it by four. When I see this one third, I find all of these measures and multiply them together, and then I just divide this by three. That's going to give me a 20.93333, so I put the bar over the top of the 3. Now, that's just one cone. We have two of them, so we need to multiply that by 2. It's going to give us approximately 41.87. Because we were dealing with pi, we have that approximate symbol, okay? It was 866667. I rounded it up to 87, see? Now, for the cylinder, the formula is pi r squared h. So we have 3.14 times the radius, because it's sharing the radius with the cone. That's going to give us 2 squared, which is a 4, and the height is 10 centimeters, so we have a 10. 4 times 10 is 40. 3.14 times 40 is 125.6, approximately, because we're dealing with pi. We add the 41.87 and the 125.6 together, and the volume is approximately 167.47 cubic centimeters. Okay? Now, sometimes you're going to come across diagrams with missing measures, and you can use common sense. If this is 6 inches and this is 2 inches and we need to find this one, well, it's 6 minus that 2. So that would be a 4, wouldn't it? If this one's missing, we can see that's 4 inches, that's 2 inches. Together, that would be 6. We can find the area of this by using either addition or subtraction. For addition, we can split this into two parallelograms, drawing a line across this way, and do 2 times 4, which is 8, and adding it to 4 times 6, which is 24, and that'll give us a 32 square inches for our area. Or we could do the 6 times 6 is 36, 
find the area for this entire thing as if this wasn't missing. So it'd be 36 for the whole perfect square. And then do subtract the 2 times 2. That'll give us 32, the same thing, see? For this drawing, there's no given radius for the cone, but we see a diameter down here at the bottom of the cylinder. Well, we know that the radius is half the diameter, and they share that diameter. So the radius is going to be 2.5, see? So you'd be able to find the volume for that cone by using half of that one's diameter, see? Also, keep your eyes open for diagrams that give you the area of the base. They might give you the area of the base. That's going to affect the formula on the sheet. The sheet's going to say the volume of a square pyramid is V equals one-third times the base edge squared times height. But the diagram, if it gives you the base area, this is the base area, so you don't have to do base edge squared. If the diagram gives you the base area, now you can just figure it as area, okay? If you're really confused about this, all of the Lesson 23 videos are very helpful. There was, what, four, five videos in Lesson 23 talking about area and volume of shapes that were not composite. They were by themselves, and we discussed this, okay? You should be ready to do the skill focus on page 309, and there's going to be links to these two grade 7 math videos that talk about area and volume of composite figures, and I'll have links to Lesson 23 about area and volume for the shapes that are not composite. Our next video is going to be about approaching multi-step problems, Lesson 26B. That talks about if you have a swimming pool and you want to put a concrete sidewalk around it, what's the square footage of the concrete going around the pool, stuff like that, okay? So keep trying, keep going. We're almost done. We only have a handful of videos left and we'll be done with the GED playlist and you'll be ready to take the test, okay? So hang in there and I'll see you next time. Use the side videos to help you if you need it. Bye.